These nine new AI tools make automating easy. So make.com have just released nine new AI automation tools within the platform. I've gotten access to the beta and in this video, I'm gonna cover everything that they do, some epic use cases so that you can basically start automating and getting your results without the headache of trying to get things to work. Now, the first one I'm gonna start off with here is the Analyze Sentiment module. Now, these AI tools aren't available for everybody just yet, just those with beta access, but I'm gonna show you some scenarios so even if you don't have access today, you can still learn about them and we're gonna cover all nine with some pretty epic use cases. So, what is the first thing that we've got? The first one we've got is this Analyze Sentiment module. And I should also add, you get this, by the way, by searching for Make AI Tools and it'll pop up if you have the access. So effectively, what this will do is it kind of serves as, think of it as what, what Make have done, is they've looked at basically what are people using ChatGPT or Lara or Claude or DeepSeek for within their platform. And they've tried to find the top nine use cases and essentially turn those into things that they could easily automate. So this one here is an analyze sentiment module. The way this one physically works, we throw the text in and then it will give us a view of whether or not it's positive. So let's head over to Google very quickly and find this out. For instance, if I head over to the delivery trust pilot who have not got a great thing, we can copy this one over. Let's head over and let's all test just to see how good these modules are all the way through. I type that in there. Do you want a yes on return description of the sentiment? We say yes. We run the module once. It works in the background and then we'll see if it's able to do that. And I'm also going to show you use cases for every one of these brand new modules so you can get it. Now, what is the sentiment negative and explains why. Now, how could you use this in a real life scenario? Well, one of the things that we could do is set up an email trigger. So if I, for example, just clone this guy. In fact, why don't I just get rid of this guy here? Beautiful. Bring him over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this module. I'm going to go for something like Gmail, which would be cool. And we'll say, hey, I'm going to watch emails. All we do is create the connection at the top, which I think many of you will have, and we're just going to refresh this one right here. So I've connected it. I've done simple filter, all emails, maximum return items could be one, but let's just say that we do this, I don't know, for 20 emails and we run it every hour. Now, what I'm thinking we could do here, for example, is we could have something where let's say we give this, we have this automation with our team, right? We get emails and then we can basically say, look, any positive emails, no problem. But if we get a negative email from a customer that's negative in sentiment, we could then forward that onto a team to escalate and have a look at what's going on. So let's just do this as a quick, for instance, we're gonna run this module once and we shouldn't have anything come through because it's new emails only, but we'll just double check that. Well, first we've got to come back and choose defaulters. So we're gonna do inbox. And what I'm gonna propose with you guys is send over that delivery email just as to what that looks like. So let's go to uh, all mail. Okay, cool, perfect. Now we click save. Let's head over to Gmail that I drafted about the items being crashed. So we come down, we hit send on that. So we're running the modules and we'll see what happens here. Is it popping up and how we get the visibility of it? We are indeed. So we have got the, look at this, my items ride split, not very good. And we said this one's done. Cool, we've got to come through and basically it's negative. So obviously in this case, what we would do is just copy this and we would want to bring over the text content to analyze, click on save. And then what we could do guys, if we wanted to, is we could add a cool router like this. And then we could say, hey, go down if it's, um, you know, the condition could be something like sentiment equals to or um, contains case insensitive negative. It goes up this route. And then again, if it goes, contains case insensitive, the same one here, we could say, look, if the description here is uh, contains case insensitive, where are we? Oh my goodness. Lost it. Beautiful, it goes down this route. And then guys, what will happen is we can have different scenarios based on if it's good or bad. Very, very cool. Another very quick use case you could do, by the way, guys, I just want to show you is basically using Google Alerts, right? What we could essentially do if we wanted to is set up a Google Alert for our business or a keyword or whatever it is it wants to do. We basically get an email sent in and the second that email comes in, we can then trigger the scenario. So, hey, if there's any negative press, hopefully there'll be no negative press because you're flipping awesome. We could trigger off automations. That, by the way, is something that you could sell uh, and crush it with. So. The next one we'll look at now is a really simple one, uh, and it's the second module on the list. And very simply, guys, this is the ask any request anything thing. It's basically just functions as chat GPT. The main advantage of this is the fact that you don't then need to go and create an account with a different provider. You don't need to create an OpenAI account or a Claude account. You can literally just ask it anything, and it'll do it for you completely native within Make. The direction of travel for Make pretty much is to make things as simple as possible. I did a podcast, I'll put a link up on somewhere on screen with the head of applied AI at Make and one of our awesome business development guys. And we covered their kind of philosophy. It's basically just making it really easy so you can go from idea to execution as quickly as humanly possible. This one's really simple. I could say something like, hey, you know, write me 200 words on why the Springer Spaniel is epic 
Well, it'd be great if I could uh, if I could actually physically spell today, wouldn't it? Cool. So basically, you can imagine this. It's just whatever use case you'd use for ChatGPT. You just use with this request anything. Give this a second. We're not really 100% sure, I think, at the moment on the model. I think what would be really cool is if they let us select the model. So if we could choose from DeepSeek or ChatGPT, whatever we wanted to. It does give us AI usage, but I guess this will be all stuff that we can expect as it comes down the pipe. It is a truly epic read. You have me at the first six words. I need to see nothing else. So we'll think about ways they could potentially improve this as we go through, but that one's pretty easy. And for a complete beginner, getting your first AI automation setup and running is very, very cool indeed. Third make AI tool is this cool categorized text model. Now, this is where it starts to get really flipping cool. So check this out. The basic function of this, guys, is you give it an input for text. And then you say, look, I'm going to give you some text from that text. I want you to categorize it for. I'm going to give you two examples. One, just to demonstrate what it does. And the second is a use case for an automation that you could actually use that could probably be quite helpful based on your circumstances. So let's just say category number one is meat. All right. And category number two is vegetable. Hopefully we're all eating our beautiful vegetables. And then if you enter the text in here. So for example, I could say sausage, right? Sausage. Boom, I click on. Oh, you can also ask it to give you an explanation, which is pretty cool. And I click run once, for example. This runs through. And if this has done its job properly, it should be telling us it is a vegetable, right? Yeah, it's me. Cool. So very, very simply, you create the categories, you give the input text, you can possibly imagine all the different things that comes out. Now, what is very, very, very cool about this, by the way, is that you can now use this as a insert as a kind of something to basically on another module. So for example, if I added another module here, all right, I've selected create a draft email just for example, but if I come down to subject, can you see now how I can come down to categories and just select the meets or I can select like the text or whatever it is, it just makes it easier now to physically use that answer in your future scenarios, which I think is very cool. Now, in terms of a practical, how could I use that to do something epic? Well, let me give you an example. Let's say, for instance, right, we go over to rss.app. If you're not familiar, by the way, RSS stands for really simple syndication. One of the cool things that it lets us do, if I come down over to um, get started now, one of the cool things that's to do is get like uh, any keyword for anything you could possibly imagine. I could give it my YouTube channel. And the second that Jack Roberts posts a YouTube channel, you can get that information it will trigger the scenario for you. Exactly. It could be um, whenever a someone makes a Twitter post or whatever it might be. But let's say, for instance, we have something like Elon Musk, right? And let's just say that, look, I want an RSS feed, right, to pull down for me every article that's published on Elon Musk. Let's just say, for instance, that's what we wanted to do. Um, what we would do is we just find the thing that we want and this cool fancy stuff we can do with filters and widgets. We'd save this feed. Check this out. I copy this feed ready. I come back over to our scenario. Let's say, for example, that I'm just going to duplicate this guy and bring him over and I'm going to delete this guy. We can come over here and type in RSS, right? And this could be retrieve RSS feed items. I always say the watch one is anything that happens in the future. It will trigger. The previous one is looking back to grab the stuff that we need. But because we're doing this live and a demo together, I'm just going to retrieve rather than wait because there's a thing called time and we need to leverage it. So we come down here. We enter in the URL really flipping simple, maximum returned items. Let's just say 20, right? I click save. I run this module once. What this will do is pull down the last 20 articles on Elon Musk. All right, cool, cool, cool. But now if let's just say that like, we'll do it. Look, I'm running a blog about, you know, let's just say that you and I think that Elon Musk is moving markets when he talks about crypto. How could we actually segment out this stuff and only find the stuff that's to do with crypto? Well, one thing that we could do is add keywords in the RSS category and we can whitelist. So if the word crypto appears, only show me those words. Now check this out. Can you see how it's actually eliminated so many of these articles because it doesn't have the word crypto in it, which is good for certain use cases. However, there are certain use cases in which we kind of just want an AI to read it and understand it. So for example, if I come over here, right, and I add a filter, check this out. Oh my goodness. So it's more like a um, flow control. There we go. We want a router, not a filter. Now check this out. What I could do is have instead of text to categorize we come over and we could say something like let's have a look at the description and just make sure uh, that we've got the right information so if i come down here okay what we might want to do actually guys looking at it is just simply download the article so for example if i just unlink these as a quick for instance all we're going to do is http which is get a file and then the url we just enter in the url here which is cool and since that's all going to be in HTML, we're just going to want to convert that to the Queen's English. So we just do HTML to text on the text parser. 
Beautiful. And then what we do, guys, is come here, put in that uh, data, click OK. Ace. So this will grab the article, it'll grab the text, and then what we can do with that text is give it to this new cool AI module in the Make AI Tools section, which is going to be here, and that's going to be the output from the fact. I'm going to need to clown that. The reason I'm clowning it, by the way, is because when that module was created, uh, the text parser didn't exist. And so sometimes you've just got to kind of delete it and, and, and reimagine it. So we come down, we click on this guy, and then text categorized is going to be text parts, uh, text. And if we look at this one here, guys, for instance, this is negative because the text presents a critical view of Elon Musk's parenting style. So again, you could do that for negative, positive, and then we would just, just like in the last one, bring out the filters, which is pretty cool. Beautiful. And the fourth AI module we have in Make is the Identify Language module. This could be something we hook up to our social media platforms if we get comments or emails from different individuals that like a bazillion different kinds of use cases. And as well, you know, one of the things we could do really is if we're scraping websites, we could actually find out, well, what language is it in? And then based on what language the website's in, we could then add a translation feature. So it's just a very cool little module just to throw in there. So we'll get some random French text and see how it does. Cool, so I have gotten some French text. Let's throw it in there as a quick, for instance, click on save and we'll run this whole module once. And does it know that it's French? We'll see. It does. And so this module could be pretty nifty. Just throw it in there, find out the language, lots of potential use cases for us. So let's head on to the next one. And I think this one's really interesting. This is extracting information from text. And I quite like how flipping simple this is. So there's a couple of use cases you could have here. One, which I think is most popular, could be something like um, contact form, where they say, hey, my name is Jack, and then I want this, and oh, by the way, my number is this. And it's really annoying because the numbers aren't in separate fields or email addresses. So what we're going to do is give it some dummy text, which you could have, for example, on a paper form, or maybe you've got like a Google lead form. That information comes in, and we want this guy just to segment out the details. So why don't we just list down something like this? Let's say the description of the thing that we want. So we'd say, hey, the phone number. The name is phone number. And in the type, in this instance, is going to be text. Actually, we kind of want a number, right? Which is cool. Then we could add another one. So we could say something like, I don't know, let's just say their email address. And then obviously email and then type is going to be text. And then why don't we add in a third one where we could say something like, do they want um, like a high ticket product? Just say like, do they want to buy um, a product? And the name would be um, interested in product. And then we'd put a Boolean so we can get a simple answer out, which is decent. And then we're going to click on save. So let me just graph some fake text. Um, and then we can trace this whole thing out together. Cool. So I've got a very simple one here. Hey, my name is Jack. I'd like to buy your products. Drop me an email on this. J Jack at jackisawesome.com. My phone number is blah, blah, blah. And we click on save. And then let's see what the output looks like. So we'll run this one once. Again, this is just kind of exemplify capabilities of this module which is very decent and it will there and we've got these information here what is cool about that very easy then to take that individual information and bring it over it now knows that jack is awesome which hopefully not enough people know that we need to spread the good word and then we've got our fun number which is flipping cool and i should say guys the other cool use case for this is around generating kpis so if you dump in a whole analysis one of the things that we could do here specifically could be what was the revenue um what was the um, customer acquisition cost? What was the gross margin? And so actually we can get all this crazy data that no one actually physically wants to read. And you can specify, look, of all this information, what the hell is the actual answer? So that could be a really great way to synthesize and just simplify reports. And then it'll just say, look, here's the information that one, too long, didn't read, can't be able to go through it. We just feed all the text here and then we give it a specific output to one. I think this module is really epic. And actually guys, it isn't, again, that you can't do this with the AI modules. I just think it's sick that it's been made very, very simple uh, just to plug and play and get started. This brings us on to module number six in the AI tool collection, which is standardizing text. What's the purpose of this one? Okay, so the idea of this one here, okay, is that we give it a text and it'll standardize it, which is probably implied by the name of it. But it's, I guess, use cases of, let's say you and I have a business together or we're writing articles together or something, and then I write a paragraph and then you write a paragraph and then Stephen Magoo writes a paragraph and it, like, it looks like it's been written by 17 different authors. The idea of this module is it will standardize all of that together. So let's give it some sample text from ChatGPT. All right, so we have got some formal, academic, poetic, and lyrical in French. Okay, it's done in different Germans. I just do this only one language. Thank you. Okay, so I headed to Claude, and I've got stories, the peculiar contraption materialized of Professor Blackwood's laboratory. Then we've got yo, 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 a bit of gangster type of approach. And then we've got a lot of letter random stuff that, quite frankly, 
uh, I'm not going to try and decode. So we put in here, we've got loads of crazy stuff. Let's see how it does at standardizing this information as being one part of uh, one particular output. Run the scenario once, give this a second to pip and pop. One of the things I'm going to be really curious to learn about actually is what's the pricing structure of this. So if I look at the input and output, you can see here. So yo, so check it out. The weird crystal thing, question mark. The strange crystal began to hum crank cosmic rhythm. Pretty cool. I'm actually quite curious about how the pricing for this works and what model they're using underneath. I think my gut will tell me that I don't know if we're going to have much model selection, given the fact that um, this is trying to make it really easy and simple people can access. So I don't know if the kind of person that isn't using AI is also really model conscious of the thing they want. That said, it would be ace to be able to have that selection for different use cases. So that's number seven. Now let's check out number eight. So number eight, guys, is very simple. Translate language one. So we'll just do one very quickly, put it in English. And let's just say we can change that to Italian, for instance. And we've got the translation in Italian. I think making automations great isn't maybe big things, but lots of micro things, which is pretty cool. Cool, but this brings on to the ninth and final use case, which is a really interesting one on the Make AI tools, which is chunking of text. Well, what's the relevance of text chunking? Well, there's a few different use cases. One of them could be, let's say that you want to, um, let's say, uh, basically put information into Pinecode, which is what we use for a retrieval augmented database. So for example, let's say we're training it on everything you've ever done on YouTube or everything you've ever written, or we just want to give it a knowledge base. We chunk because we can add overlap to this, right? Because sometimes there's like limitations on the number of um, characters you can upload to something. And it doesn't have to be for RAG, it could be for anything. Let's say that we're trying to create reports, but if it's too long, it doesn't work for some reason. Here we can say, I want a maximum of 500 characters. And we have this chunk overlap feature, uh, which you may see from different platforms. And basically what this means is, let's say we have like a Harry Potter book, right? And we take the first 500 words. What this will basically do is say, look, basically document one or output one will be zero to word 500. Output two will be word 450 to word 950 because it takes the last 50 words or characters of the previous chunk so that it can textually make sense. That's particularly relevant for things like RAG because then it has more context. So let's give it a very quick example. And the example I've got here is Wuthering Heights, book i am not read since college. Um, that might actually be the last fiction book I read, believe it or not, oh my goodness. Cool, and check this out, guys. It has put it into lots of chunks. Well, this one about Lothian Heights, and then we've got chunk two, chunk three, and then you can use these different bundles for whatever purposes you may please. And again, guys, we could use for so many things. We could use this for things like getting long blog posts and putting them into social media posts. So if I do a mega video on like 69 things you need to know about business, this would then go, okay, cool, there's number one, there's number two, there's number three. It could be things like taking very long articles and making them easier to understand. There's like a bazillion use cases for it. But the TLDR of it is, I think this is a great thing directionally to try and simplify using AI. Let me know your favorite one down below in the comment section. But in any case, guys, have a beautiful week and I'll see you in the next one.